right, thank you for staying with the Monday Report. We're getting to the tail end of this conversation between Kenya and U.S. relations. And the next question for my panelists will be, what next as a country? What do we now need to put in place as we move forward? But first, let's bring up some of the feedback at Trevor Media at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Monday Report. Let's bring up just quick remarks from what you're saying online here and see what you're saying in terms of the Kenya-U.S. relation. This is just two days after the president came from the United States of America after a four-day state visit. A lot of good is coming through with it, including the expressway from Nairobi all the way to Mombasa. They say that will cut down the hours by about 4.5 hours, about 477 billion. There's quite a lot that was there in terms of democracy, delivering democracy, 40 million US dollars, supporting independent civil society. That also put at about 700,000 US dollars. There's quite a lot of it, bringing transparency to government. Governance. This is according to the White House, by the way. They've been they're putting the monetary value on everything that they've done, including corruption, combating corruption at 500,000 US dollars, all that. But let's see what you're saying. Peter says the relationship between Kenya and the USA is mutually beneficial, enhancing economic growth, security, and cultural ties. The cooperation between the two countries continues to evolve, addressing global challenges and contributing to regional stability and development. All right. Uh, you call yourself Campus Life. He says the Kenya-U.S. visit was successful and established a partnership for prosperity that will see tech companies and other multi-billion dollar U.S. firms invest directly into our economy and utilize our well-skilled workforce. All right. Let's start off with the closing remarks here and I'll bring you Fatma on this. Which way forward? What must we now put in place as a country to ensure we harness all these benefits without being necessarily exposed either socially or economically or otherwise? Okay. So, I mean, to just follow from the comments we received in yeah. terms of the economical uh, perspective, I think a lot of people are excited about the economical opportunities, but I think we really need to put a very good conducive environment for people to come and invest in our country. Otherwise, we might end up losing them to our neighbors. We know some of them are also emulating us and coming up. So I think we have to be very careful with how we, what kind of um, investment opportunity we are giving. You know, the, I mean, the laws that we have, how we also, everything has to be done in line with our laws. And I think this is also to just give confidence to our people that we're not being exploited. So I think there's, there's need a lot to unpack and explain to, to Kenyans, you know, how this opportunity is going to be anchored within our own laws, our own constitution. And again, when I talk about conducive environment, you know, issues like corruption, we really need to take care of that. Secondly, also, we need to think of, because um, I, I see that one of the options, I mean, one of the potential ways to ease our burden in terms of uh, taxation is when we have these investors come because they will create employment, they'll also pay taxation. But if we don't think about how to do it properly, then we might end up uh, sending them to our neighbors. Um, the other thing also is that um, I think has, has been said um, as a country, we have come a long way um, in being recognized, having all this mutual interest with other countries, but we also have to be very careful and uh, be very, and I think the, the government of, of, of the day is uh, aware of that and they're taking that into account. Thanks. So also we need to focus a lot on our national interest yeah. as Kenya. We have all these goodies, but at the end of the day, what is our national interest? What is our take on this? You know, what can we negotiate and what can we not negotiate? And also, what are we benefiting from all this? Okay. So if I send or I train the Haitian, um, Haitian policemen, as Kenya, yes, I'm doing good because I'm bringing peace to that region. There are brothers in diaspora, as we can say, but also as a, what are we gaining? Uh, what kind of expertise, tech, technical expertise or what are the things that we are gaining. Yeah. So I think also we really need to clear, clarify yeah. and know exactly what is our, that's why he's saying it's not with East or West, but it's just Facing. heading where yeah, Kenya okay. is heading to. Okay. And uh, finally, I think also we need to also know that all this investment has to be kept here so we don't do brain drain. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not training, we are not creating all this capacity to, to, to lose maybe 
a lot of potential for our country. Okay. Yeah. Professor Mrene, what are the steps forward now? And is this free money? Are they just grants or are we talking about loans here? Where do we put <coughs> There's no free money. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as free There's money. No such thing. <laughs> free lunch? It may be called grant, may be called this. Yeah. And uh, yes, we are going to get some helicopters. Because, you know, we have a problem with helicopters. Yeah. They're going to give us a few helicopters uh, and uh, some, some other things, which are good. But um, I think the country needs a dialogue with itself. Yeah. Serious self-assessment. Because a lot of things are dislocated. And that's why we have problems. Now, that self-assessment dialogue is a policy issue. It's not technical. Mm. Even the education support they are they are promising to give will need some serious evaluation, policy positions, uh, so that we stop having a dislocated education system or health system, because the, everything starts at the top, at the head. So we need to re-examine the head, and that's where the national dialogue comes in. And um, call Kenyans. It's good to have some development partners and all those other nice terminologies we use. Uh, but it's bottom line. Mm -hmm. It's the Kenyans. It should be a dialogue among the Kenyans on how then to relate to the Americans, to the Chinese, to the Russians, to the Indians. But it has to come from within Kenyans. So we need to show a little more trust and confidence in the ability of the Kenyans mm. uh, in order to, because whoever those experts, some of them are very good, but their interest is something else. So, and I think we have Dr. Fatma said, the, the national interest. We have a tragedy in the country that there are people in positions of decision making mm -hmm. who are ignorant about national interest. I mean, and therefore, mm -hmm. when such people are in positions of making decisions that affect the country, they end up getting cheated by those others that they deal with. Eh? Mm -hmm. And so it becomes necessary whom are we entrusting with dialoguing for us okay. outside there? Yeah. So if we can have that dialogue within the country, then we can be able to say the way forward is this. Okay. And then we shall stop having dislocations All right. in the country that drive away investment, mm. create poverty and drive away investment. If we can encourage domestic investors instead of discouraging them, mm. then even foreign investors will come okay. because they'll see some vibrancy mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the domestic arena. So okay. that's my take on that. All right. Professor Njoroge, mm -hmm. what, what are the next steps from here? Thank you very much, Trevor. I believe one of the key points on way forward is a very serious stakeholder engagement, where we are looking at this cooperation that is already agreed on, and we are saying as a country, these are our priority areas in enhancing quality and relevance of our training in the area of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mm -hmm. The other area is this benefits or these outputs that are coming from the research and innovation are really responding and are being beneficial to us as a country. So serious stakeholder engagement. If we are thinking of modernization of our learning and teaching uh, facilities, including the staff themselves, what are those priorities? And I think it's a very good opportunity to bring uh, the academia the researchers, our policy makers together yeah. in a proactive way mm. to determine what our priorities are right. in STEM. 
Thank you. Manyora? Trevor, there are, there are two things. First of all, let's agree that uh, a lot of good things have come from this trip. Some, of course, is aid, some is loan, and there's a thin line between what is a loan, what is an aid, what is aid. Some of it is serious, just strictly business, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, and so on. The first thing for us to do is to look at this deal with our eyes wide open and stop being the normal Kenyans. So we are, this means media like you, the academia like us here, civil society, politicians, parliament, and so on, to ensure that if we talk about police reforms and there's money set aside for that, it doesn't work the way it has worked before. We have talked about police welfare, including housing. The money has ended in the hands of few people. That's what we need to look at. Business from outside should be encouraged. <coughs> like Masharia Munene says, it should not stifle local business. I look to a time when it will be our businessmen dealing with American businessmen, as opposed to government negotiating business deals. Government is not good at negotiating business deals. It should be Kenyan businessmen dealing with American businessmen. And finally, we have to be very careful with our new status because we can lose our friends, especially in Africa. I even fear for the Raila bid for AU. This newfound relationship with America can scare away our friends, especially in Africa. I'm looking at American allies who have the status we have just achieved, including countries like Morocco. You look at how they are relating with other African countries. We have to be careful that while we embrace America because we are benefiting greatly and we can benefit a lot more if we are if we are more Kenyan, if we, if, if we think about country, mm. we can benefit a lot. But while doing that, we should not lose our African friends because we need them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Dr. Jem, closing remarks? Yeah. And way forward. Uh, yeah. Or oh, not losing our African friends, some of these goodies can be shared within the region. <laughs> and uh, where they can be shared, I think it's, it behooves us to do so. Like, yeah. for example, the engagement with Microsoft, the AI computing. They're going to do it in a modern manner where they use Swahili as a language. We know Swahili is a language of the region. We have lots of terrestrial fiber. We have marine fiber. How can we utilize that fiber and put on it content that we can share in the region so that these goodies benefit a larger, uh, should I say, geopolitical uh, a a area? And in so doing, perhaps, even as we have taken our foot forward and begun to negotiate with the U.S., you may be surprised that our regional partners also see benefit in coming to the same table to negotiate for these goodies and also therefore stabilize the region a little bit further. But that doesn't mean that we forget that we had different heritages of the past, ours being largely, if I may say, British in the pre or the colonial era, and stroke now American, whereas Tanzania did look to China at an earlier pay point in time. Mm. And of course, President Museveni had his in the Nordics, but that doesn't mean the future cannot be redefined and there wouldn't be a new path going forward. I want to say, Trevor, something that really, really impressed me about the raft of goodies was climate. Mm. We came back with a very big grant of, I think, US dollars, 600 billion for climate change and clean energy which can be deployed, as we know, in clean energy development. Okay. So what are we going to do at sub-national level? Mm -hmm. How are we going to put in place committees that are also sub-national through our counties so that the goodies at TVET le level can be dispersed at sub-national level? Okay. What action plans will we have in place from the position of Mama Mboga so that she's involved and understands yeah. to the national level? Okay. And before we end, yeah. I think the story of Haiti needs to be told a little bit more and with it, the story of the global Africa and the fact that if we share values about our freedom and we share values about global Africa, that we really do have the need to take care of our brother's welfare. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thank you so much for making time this evening, Dr. Josephine Ojiambo, Research Associate at the University of Nairobi and also former Ambassador of Kenya to New York and former Deputy Secretary General Commonwealth, Haman Manyora, Communication and Governance at the University of Nairobi, also Associate Fellow at the Global Center for Policy and Strategy, that's GLOSEPS. 
Professor Grace Nyoroge, Professor of Botany, Science and Technology Expert at JQUAT and Council Member Global Center for Policy and Strategy, that's GLOSEPS, and Professor Masharia Munene, Historian and Foreign Relations Expert, USIU, Associate Fellow as well at the Global Center for Policy and Strategy, and Fatima Ahmed Ali, Associate uh, Professor of International Relations, USIU, and Fellow at the Global Center for Policy and Strategy. And thank you all for all of you watching and sending their views on behalf of everybody else who made this possible. Say good night. And God bless. My name is Trevor Ombeja.